Hi guys, my name is Melissa and today we're going to go over some challenge problems. And so in these types of problems, we're going to go over um, problems that use a lot of the strategies that we've been learning so far in the previous videos. So let's go over problem 181. It says compute 777 plus 444 minus parentheses 777 minus 444. Now the number inside the parentheses looks really similar, but one has a positive and one is a negative, so we cannot cancel out these two parentheses because they are essentially different. But what we can do is distribute the negative sign, and so we can write this as 777 plus 444 minus 777 and distribute the negative and negative and so this is going to be minus negative 444 which is going to be positive 444 and here we can cancel out 777 because one is positive and one is negative so 777 minus 777 is zero, so they cancel out. So we have 444 plus 444, which is equal to 888. Now we have problem 182. So here we have each day, Charlie Chipmunk adds 36 berries to his bucket, so we add 32. Then he eats 31, and so he starts with an empty bucket, so we have zero. Let's just write that to indicate it was empty. How many berries does Charlie have in his bucket at the end of seven days? So this is for one day, and that gives us five so it's five per day and so we're gonna skip count by fives for seven we're gonna skip count seven times it's gonna be five ten fifteen twenty twenty five and thirty now you guys might be wondering oh this is only six numbers but what we shouldn't forget is that we started with zero in the beginning. Day one, day two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So 30 is going to be... All right, so this was first day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth, sixth, and then we need a seventh so we have 35 berries again if you guys need more time to process the information or if we're going over problems a bit too quickly because of the time limit then of course um, since we want to match it to 40 minutes uh, just around 40 minutes if you guys need more time always just feel free to pause the video and come back when you need to so each like each count is gonna be one day. So the space in between the count is gonna be one day, not each number. Fill each circle below with plus or minus to make the equation true. So based on 198, to get to 200, we need to add two. So with these numbers, we need to make these two should sum up to two. And so to do that, we're gonna subtract and add, and that's gonna give us 56 minus 55, which is one. And then we're gonna do the same thing here. Wait, sorry. So we're gonna do the same thing Um, for these two numbers, 
so we have 1, and then 56 minus 57 is minus 1. Okay, so if we do this, then we have minus 55 plus 56 minus 57 plus 58. That's going to give us 1 minus 57 plus 58, which gives us 1 plus 1, which is 2. So eventually we have 198 plus 2, which is 200. Now it says how many, um, looking at the next problem, how many more black dots than white dots are in the diagram below? So again, this is basically skip counting. And so if we look at each group of dots, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven black dots and four white dots. So there's three more black dots in each group. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten groups. Sorry, we have 11 groups. So we're going to skip count threes 11 times. So we're skip counting by threes 11 times. So we have three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. 12, 15. We're skip counting. 18, 21, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then we have 20, sorry, 24, 28, 31, 28. I just wrote the wrong number. 24, then 27, right? Since we add 3. And then we have 30 and 33, which is what happens when we skip count 11 times. Right? So we're going to have 33 more black dots. We'll look at problem 185. And so fill in the blanks in the skip counting pattern below. Now here we don't have any two consecutive numbers, but we do have two numbers, 45 and 60. So 60 minus 40 is 15, right? So the difference between the two numbers is 15. Then we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Wait, sorry. We have one, two, three, four, and five. So this was skip counted. So basically, this was. Skip counted five times, and so we're going to divide 15 by 5, which is 3. Um, if you guys learned division, this is one way you can solve it. I'll teach you guys another way that doesn't involve division later on. But then that tells us that each we're skip counting um, by threes. So to check that. Uh, we'll try, and that does work, right, since we get 60. So the numbers are going to be like this. And so we were skip counting by threes. But if we don't want to do that, then we can also use guessing and checking, right? And so we want to try guessing, so we can do like, oh, 
um, if we do plus 2, plus 2, if we skip count by 2, does that get us to 60? So we can do trial and error process using different numbers. Try to skip counting by 1s, 2s, 3s, 4s until we find that 3 works. You can do that. If you guys learn multiplication and division, then definitely this might be an easier way for you guys. Now let's look at the next problem. Fill all three blanks below with the same number to make the equation true. So all three blanks below with the same number. So to get from 44 to 100, we need to add Fifty-six. So we know that we need to add 56, but if all numbers have to be the same, that must be that all their numbers are 56. And that definitely works because this itself gives us 100, and we have negative 56 and 56, so we're adding a negative number to itself, right? So we're basically subtracting a number for itself since it's negative and so they cancel out and we get 100. Um, problem 187. Um, Ralph adds every whole number from 1 to 99. Cami adds every whole number from 2 to 100. How much greater is Cami's sum than Ralph's sum? So for Ralph, he adds Every whole number from 1 to 99, so he does 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 um, until he gets to plus 98 plus 99. And for Cami, she adds every whole number from 2 to 100. So she does 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 99 plus 100. How much greater is Cami's sum than Ralph's sum? So let's look here. Um, we're going to look for numbers that overlap between Ralph and Cami. So for Ralph, he has every number, he adds every number from 2 to 99, and they are all, all involved in Cami's, right? So the only difference is that um, Ralph adds 1. Since Cami doesn't start from 1, so she doesn't get to add the 1. So Cami, she does everything from 2 to 99, but then she adds 100. So that's her unique point. So now we're going to um, look at the difference between these two. Right? That's going to be 99. So basically, Cami's sum is 99 greater than Ralph's sum. Now we have problem 188. Compute the value of the expressions below. So again, um, we're going to look at the parentheses. 20 plus 19 is 39. 19 plus 18 is... Right, so um, instead of looking at the parentheses, just like what we were just doing, um, just like what I just did, uh, that might be, of course, that does work. I know that that might seem easier for some of you guys, like just not being confused, just, straight, just solving the equation as it is. You can do 19, 20 plus 19 equals 39, and then do vertical addition. But I know that this, like, just straight up solving without strategy might be easier for some of you guys because it reduces any, um, wait, any confusion. Um, another trick that we can use is, again, distributing the signs. So we have 20 plus 19, distribute the negative sign, minus 19, minus 18. And we just stopped here. Just for the purpose, uh, we can cancel out 19, right? 
And then we add 18 and 17 since it's positive anyways. Then distribute the negative sign, minus 17 minus 16. Now if we stop here just to um, not get confused with the lo large number, um, we can cancel 18 and negative 18 out, 17 and negative 17. Now we add, because distributing a plus sign basically makes no difference, right? Only distributing a negative sign has an effect. And distribute the negative sign in here, cancel negative 16 and 16, 15 and negative 15. So basically we're left with 20 minus 14, which is six. Um, now we're gonna look at um, solving for solutions and we're gonna look at odds. Um, so this is basically a new chapter called solutions. And then our first topic is going to be odds and evens. So we'll look at an example. The numbers we get when we count by twos, right? Starting with zero are even. So zero is an even number. So we have zero, two, four, six, eight, ten. And so since we count by twos, basically all even numbers can be divided by two if we learn division. Um, if you guys didn't learn division yet, just know that um, numbers including zero and counting by twos is, are even. Now all of the other whole numbers that are not zero and are not even, so not counting by twos are odd. Like one, three, five, seven, right? We're not counting by two starting with zero and they're all odd. And a trick to remembering this is that even numbers end in zero, two, four, six, or eight. And odd numbers end in one, three, five, seven, or nine. Now let's try looking for even numbers below. Um, ending with three, so it's odd. Ending with the six, even, right? Ending with the zero, even. Ending with the one, odd. Ending with the five is odd. And ending with the eight is even. Circle every odd number below. We end with the nine, so it's odd. We end with the two, so it's even. We end with the one, so it's odd. End with the seven, odd. Zero is even, and three is odd. Now we have what is the largest two digit odd number? So like when we identify odd or even numbers, we always look at the end right, the ones place. And the largest, um, largest ones place for an odd number is going to be nine because the possible endings are going to be one, three, five, seven, and nine for odd numbers, right? One, three, five, seven, or nine. So the largest from there is going to be nine. And out of the two, di out of two digit numbers, out of two digit numbers, um, the sm the largest that can go in the tens place is going to be nine. So our largest two digit odd number is going to be ninety nine. What is the largest three digit even number? Again, we have three digits and we look at the ones place to see if a number is odd or even. Possible endings can be zero, two, four, six, or eight. So the largest is gonna be eight. 
Now for the hundreds place and tens place, we're gonna fill it in with the largest number less than 10, right? Since it has to be one unit, like one digit number, it's gonna be nine. So our largest three digit number is gonna be 998. And then we have how many odd numbers are between 46 and 64? And so we're gonna list odd numbers between 46 and 64. So from starting from 46, an odd number is gonna be 47, 49, 51, 52 doesn't work, 53, 54 doesn't work, and so 55, 57, 59, 61 and 63. Now you guys might notice that odd numbers are also basically skip counting by twos, right? We're skip counting by twos, but for odd number, it's skip counting by twos starting from one. And for even numbers, it's skip counting by twos starting from zero. So that's the difference. So let me just write this. So. For even numbers, it says skip counting by twos, starting with zero. And it's also similar for odd numbers, but we start with one. And so that is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine numbers. So we have nine odd numbers between 46 and 64. And so since we have some time left for today's class, we're going to go over dot traces. And so, and so before we go over dot traces, um, we didn't have too much to cover in today's class because today's class was kind of dedicated to figuring out whether you guys understood all the content we have learned so far, um, including the ones we learned in the previous videos. And so today's video basically revolved around solving some challenge problems. And you guys should understand that um, these challenge problems are a combination of multiple strategies that we learned throughout uh, multiple videos so naturally it is okay for some it is okay for you guys to not be completely sh uh like not be 100 percent sure at all strategies and it is also normal to be confused with some questions especially especially challenge questions that have stars in it or say extra challenges because those types of problems are designed to kind of test whether you can um, whether you can utilize the strategies you learned and not only use them, but then use them in combination with various strategies. And so um, as of now, if you guys aren't completely like sure, confident and stabilized with some strategies, then that's totally fine. Um, if you guys have specific like topics that you are kind of confused with, then I recommend you guys go back to that video, um, try to pause those videos, especially for questions that you struggled with, and then you guys can try solving those questions again on your own. And if you solved it again, but it was still confusing, then I recommend you guys watch the video for that question again. Um, really try to understand my explanation and why the solution came out to be that way. And then I recommend you guys try solving it again until you guys really solidify, solidify your understanding of that topic, that question, and that strategy. And then, yeah, um, in future classes, if we have um, a short like topic to cover like today, we're, we are going to go over some um, extra practice problems like these. So even though dot trace isn't exactly related to what we've been doing so far, um, they are like fun puzzles that can stimulate your thinking for math. And so um, for future classes, 
like today if we have some time left over then we're, um, we're going to go over problems like dot traces um, or other extra problems that can kind of um, keep us engaged and it, not, it might not always be related to what we're learning that day but yeah um, so we'll just go straight into dot traces and we'll solve some practice problems that go along with the topic today and at the end if you guys have any questions um, you guys can always come back to the video and then rewatch it. The concept of dot trace is we're going to go through all the gray lines without having to lift our pencil or without tracing over the same line twice. So one way to do it is like this. And so for each practice problem, we're going to try to um, cross every gray line, don't lift pencil, and um, trace every gray line exactly once. And some of the questions might be impossible. In this case, we can go like this. So it would be one, two, three, and four. There's multiple possibilities. <clears throat> so this is one way that we can go. Another way could be like, this and then for 121 we can start from this triangle and then yeah we've completed the path and then for 122 um, we're going to try to solve this. And so after multiple trials, we can find that this group of dots is impossible to trace. So we're going to circle it since it's impossible. And then for 123, we can start. Um, we can start by going up, back down, and like so. And also, if your solution is different from mine, but it still worked, then it could be correct because there can be multiple possibilities um, for these types of questions. And for this, we have one more line now compared to the previous problem. And this path is impossible, so we're going to circle it. And then for problem 125, there's many ways to trace this um, type of path, but I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first go this way, back up, down, up. Um, from there, I'm going to go... Okay, so instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here. Like a Christmas tree. Down. And then end. So that did work. For 126, um, this group of dots is actually impossible to solve, and so we're going to circle it for now. For 127, and also 
for you guys. You guys can pause the video, take some more time to try, and then figure out if it's impossible or not. For 127, there's many ways to trace, but I'm gonna go this way. And go to the side. Like so. And then for 128, um, for 128, there is also many ways to trace every gray line without picking the punts, picking up the pencil, or tracing the same line twice. But one way to do this is can first go up and then all down side and kind of zigzag our way um, to completion and then so we call a dot that is connected to an even number of dots an even dot and we call a dot that is connected to an odd number of dots an odd dot. So on the previous page, we're going to circle every odd dot. So it's a dot that's connected to an odd number of dots. So we're going to circle odd dots. So these are going to be odd dots. It's connected to one dot, connected to three dots. Um... In 121, all of them are even dots. For this one, we have odd dots connected to one, connected to three, connected to three, and connected to one. And then we have odd dots here as well, connected to three, connected to three odd dots connected to three 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 for 125 all of them are even dots and then in 126 these were odd dots connected to one dot each and connected to three dots, like one, two, three. And then in 128, all of them were even dots. And so in 130, we're gonna fill each blank below with possible or impossible. So if all the dots are even, it is possible to trace every line Right, based on what we saw previously. If there are exactly two odd dots, like 120, 123, or 127, it is possible to trace every line. But if there are more than two dots, if there are more than two odd dots, like in problem 122, 124, 126, which were the ones that we said were impossible, then it is impossible to trace every line. And so in the next problem, it says, to trace a problem that has exactly two dots, we must start and end on, so let's look here. We must start and end on an odd dot. And so we should start and end in an odd dot. And then so in problem 132, it says, 
Circle the odd dots from each drawing below, then draw a path that traces every gray line exactly once without picking up your pencil. So we're going to circle odd dots. So in the first figure, um, the odd dots are going to be these two. So this has, this is connected to three dots. This is also connected to three dots. And so we're going to start from odd and then finish at odd. So we're going to start at this odd dot. And then we finished at this odd dot. For the next one, the odd dots are going to be these two, since these two are connected to three dots each. One, two, three dots. And one, two, three dots. And so we're going to start at this odd dot and then we're going to work our way up and trace the outer linings. And then I'm going to go in and then end in my odd dot. For the last figure, the two odd dot, the two odd dots are going to be here. So each one is connected to three dots like this. And so we're going to start with this odd dot and then I'm going to go down and then again I'm going to trace the outer linings then I'm going to go in um, yeah I'm going to go in and then end here so yeah, that was it for dot trace and I'll see you guys in the next video.